But let's get back to the trip they can't kick Kiki off. So we open with Stormy and she trying to get her mom and her aunt on the good foot with a family fish fry. Across town, Melody stops by Nell's charity event. She thanks them for the trip and lets them know Martell wants to meet up with her, but she ain't sure if she got time. However, but back with Stormy, her and her friend Butter are gonna go to try to fix the family. I wish I could care about this family feud, but we barely are getting to know Stormy. Now we gotta deal with your mom and your auntie and their wigs? Carlos, this feels so out of left field. Oh, God. Mel, why are you wearing a freakum dress and a fresh wig to meet with Martell? You should have worn a mom outfit. Something to run to Target in. But you got that hair bouncing and behaving, showing leg and hip and body, body, Bronxy. Martel bought her flowers. Why? I'm sick of Martel trying to act like he want her back when he don't. And I'm sick of Mel playing along. So Martel's saying he thinks that things are getting better. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, he was trying to spread revenge porn or revenge porn rumors about her. So she didn't have it. He said he's sorry for their last little dust up, but he wants when they see each other for them to be in a good place and for her to have her guard down. Mel said we ain't in a good place and ain't gonna get to one. Martel said we've gotta get into a much better space, but you keep putting y'all in a shitty one, but that's who you are and we're tired. He gonna say Mel should wanna be in a good place. No, you think Mel should wanna put up with your mistreatment. Honestly, I'm tired of this scene because they're having the same argument they've been having for six seasons and 40 episodes of freaking season. Episode 31, Carlos. They ain't got that much story to tell. 31 episodes. So she says, why are you lying on me saying that I cheated? Because he doesn't live in reality and he's a shithead. Girl, you saying I got to get out of here. I got a flight. I got to get on dressed like that. Heffa, please. You could have kept on your sweatpants. Oh, God, but now we got Kimmy and Maurice trying to get that old thing back. She done done a boudoir photo. Girl, you started this show doing a boudoir photo for him. Why he pulling up in a rented Lambo? Y'all ain't got Lambo money. Kimmy has been trying to sexually please this man for the whole marriage. I hope the dick good. It must be to put in that kind of effort. So they go on and hump, and now we got Mealy Mouth Tisha and her big ugly. Ooh, let's get this over with, because this show, like Carlos King, has become a punishment. So Marceau find, so we trying to get house number one finished. We didn't given up on Scott Manor, and Tisha's tired of being in that apartment. I can't believe they actually remodeled this house. Marceau coming up with all these projects and excuses as to why it's not done. But Tisha putting her foot down. All right, look at her with a vertebrae. Not a backbone, but a vertebrae. But now Tisha telling him she hurt that he doubted her over the pregnancy test. You're married to a shithead. At this point in your union, you should no longer be surprised with his shitheadery. You should expect it. You should know I've married an emotionally immature little boy. Taking grown man shits, but that's a little boy brain. A big ugly with a little boy brain. So Tisha says we ain't got trust, and he asks, have you ever stepped out? Now you know this girl ain't never stepped out. You know the mouth is too mealy. So she pulls a Marceau and she says, I ain't gonna answer that. You did that all the time, so go on, Tisha. Where did Tisha get this backbone from? I guess she really want another check for next season. God, can't they just cancel this show? Put it out to pasture. Give it the old yellow. Child, that's the shit. Let's get to bed, collective. They need to get divorced. Oh, thank God next week is the freaking reunion. Oh, God. Letitia going in with the damn boxing coat on. So we open with Akeisha hosting an emergency meeting with Marie and Mr. Essie. Because the gala has to be canceled, but it's too late to cancel now. I mean, why not call Lady Isha and have her throw together a busted, dirty plate brunch? That's what it's going to be anyway. So Akeisha wants it to go from gala to dance party with a huge charcuterie. 
She saw what the show was willing to pay and y'all don't got gala coin. Marie, however, is like, well, since I don't have a say, I guess I can go. Oh, God. Why is Glenn throwing Cliff a birthday party? Get somebody get Cliff some bus. Somebody get Cliff some ping, because I'm telling you the way he was looking at that stripper. He wanted a peek. Latrice said, you trying to outshine me. Well, you want a daddy, not a husband. Glenn looks into Cliff's eye with that submission that he craves. Girl, Latrice went on and admitted she forgot his birthday. Yeah, that marriage needs to end. So Latrice's assistant brings up the fact that Tam was pregnant. Jen said, yeah, I heard about the gender reveal. I got people everywhere. Mm-hmm, everywhere in women's business. Latrice is like, I wish Tamra would share more. She don't like you. That's why she ain't telling you nothing. She don't like you. She don't like none of the heifers on this show. She thinks she's better. And she's just older. She's just older. Latrice came up with a good point. She's tired of Tamra's charade. You ain't got to tell us your business, but the charade and facade isn't necessary. All right, so now it's the day of the lupus gala. That's not so gala. When are we going to be able to see Lady Isha House? Why is she getting dressed at this office? Because we didn't watch this heifer act like she was moving to a model unit. We see this heifer at an office for a business she ain't got. I want to see the heezy. Okay, so the Bell Collective got an invitation to the Capitol except Marie. Okay, if they didn't want to be affiliated with Marie, then why didn't they have none of y'all there if the state's so anti-Marie? Latrice, that was you. Oh my God, Mr. Essie was there on the phone letting Marie know everything that was going down. That's a husband. That's a husband. Masculinity. So Marie thinks Tamra's behind her lack of invitate. Oh, Marie went off on the bells too, saying, I know y'all hate Marie. Well, I like Marie because she's good television, but she doesn't seem pleasant. She doesn't seem easy to get along with. And she lets the shit with Latrice go on too long. Although I will say, Latrice talk about her business was beyond foul. But did anybody actually believe the crap in the comments? Maybe she takes it a little too serious. So, ladies, she said, if Marie wasn't invited, none of us should have went. But why were you there? But now we got the event and Akeisha's the first to arrive. So, since Marie wasn't invited, you let Mr. Essie slip in to dip it, pop it, twerk it, stop it, check up on it. I didn't know Essie had a bank to check up on y'all, but okay. okay. But let's see who else showing up. Oh, it's Marie and Mr. Essie. But why aren't they coming in arm in arm? Don't hide your lesbian love. The fruit plate looks nice. They got wine and Chardonnay out. Mr. Essie all in sequin. Oh, God. A hey, Keisha. You couldn't have picked a cheaper fabric. Oh, wait. That was Marie in that purple dress. I can't tell them apart. You know how it is when couples have been together so long they start to look alike. Oh, Lady Isha couldn't make it to the party. She has a cold. Latrice is waiting on somebody to bring up the Capitol tonight to enjoy the show. The show you started. Oh, Lord, but in walks a Keisha. And Mr. Essie, oh, Mr. Essie and um, Marie are in matching dresses. Like a cute couple would. Ooh, but wait, the Essie look in a timbre? She gonna get with her. So you're here to support the Lupus Warriors? That means you're supporting Marie and Mr. Essie. You are a public figure in your community. Figure? A figure. You a figure, all right. Glenn said he ain't even gonna mention Tamra's pregnancy. He know about it, but he ain't gonna say nothing. Smart. So after speeches, the drama begins to get underway. Oh, Lord, Miss Essie come over and sit down right betwixt Tamra and Latrice. I don't think the gala is the time or place to talk about what happened at the Capitol. It's a little embarrassing. So now Latrice said, well, it's not about Hamilton Davis. It's about the reputation of Marie. Because what you do in the dark always comes back. Well, hold on. You admitted that you tried to sabotage her business. When does that come back to you? But now Marie walks up. So Glenn tries to calm them down. 
But Latrice said, well, you tried to assassinate my character. Glenn tried to say it's bigger than y'all egos. Glenn, shut up. Now Marie saying, get your weight up, because we're going to fight it out in court. Get your weight up. Get your weight. Oh, my God. Marie can't go to a party without getting about it. Marie said, I'm an OG. I'm a bell. My, my story too important. And Keisha's like, let's break this up so we can get this gala going. Marie storm out. Marie come back in checking on Essie. Did you get what you need? Did you get what you need? So now Tamra's about to leave. She can only do heels for so long. So as Tamra's walking out, Marie tells her it's effed up to exclude me. I excluded you. Tamra did not just say take care, baby, and walk off. Marie was in the middle of talking. She said, bye. Marie, I think you two upset at Tambra when Latrice is probably the issue. So they only got recognized as visitors, so now Marie don't care that much no more. Marie said it looked like a fifth grade field trip. I agree. So it looks like this is where the season wraps up. Marie Mama getting some help. Gucci family back Gucci. Latrice is building her building. Tambra cooking her baby. Lady, she's having a book signing on Ferris Street, and she's glad she's back with Glenn. I mean, ain't shit out there, so I can understand ain't shit. All right, well, that was the season. Looking forward to the reunion. See you soon.